Today we will travel to St. Selpa, Switzerland, the home of six-year-old twins Alessia and Livia Shep, who were lively and bright little girls. They were exceptionally close and you never saw one without the other. In 2011, Alessia and Livia disappeared with their father, Matthias Shep. What would transpire would become one of Europe's most bizarre missing person cases. There are many twists and turns in this case, and it's hard to discern the truth from fiction. The next case takes us to St. Joseph, Missouri, the home of 15-year-old Ashley Renee Martinez. Ashley was your typical teenager. She loved dressing up, having sleepovers, and hanging out with friends. Ashley took pride in her appearance, and by 2004, she was in the 8th grade at Robodo Middle School in Missouri. One sunny July afternoon would change the course of Ashley's life forever. Who did she meet up with, and why did she disappear? On October 7, 2004, Arena and Matthias Shep welcomed twin girls Alessia Vera Shep and Livia Clara Shep into the world. The family lived in St. Selpa, Switzerland, and both Arena and Matthias were Swiss, but had been born elsewhere. Arena, Italian-born Swiss, and Matthias, Canadian-born Swiss. The joy of family life was short-lived, and just weeks before the girls' disappearance, Matthias and Arena split. Arena later described her ex-husband as perversely narcissistic and a control freak. The girls would spend weekends with their father and their arrangements appeared to suit both parties. On January 28, 2011, Matthias arrived at Arena's house to pick Alessia and Livia up. The two girls kissed their mother goodbye, not knowing it would be the last time they would ever see her. Matthias bundled the girls into the car and drove off into the distance. Arena believed Matthias was taking them to his house, but the truth was much darker. The next morning, Matthias sent a text to Arena, reassuring her that the children would be back in her arms by Monday. As the day wore on, Arena began to panic. Matthias wasn't answering her texts or calls. At first, she chalked it up to him being busy with the children, but when January 30th came and there was still no word, she sensed something was wrong. Her mother's intuition told her that something about the situation was off, and she alerted the Swiss authorities. At first, they told her not to worry, that the girls would return. This would cost the search for Alessia and Livia valuable time. Arena began a search for her children, driving around the neighborhoods of St. Sulpus and to her former husband's home. Swiss police also paid a visit to Matthias' home, but they found no sign of him or the girls. However, what they did find was a will that had been written on January 27, 2011. The will detailed what to do in the case of his imminent death, adding, my children, Alessia and Livia, will receive the inheritance in two equal parts. This confirmed to investigators that Matthias had likely taken off with the children and their lives were possibly in danger. According to reports, the last confirmed sighting of Alessia and Livia was on January 30th, 2011 at 1 p.m. when they were playing with children in the neighborhood. Somehow, the Swiss police missed the girls, although it is unclear if they were seen at Matthias's home or just in a neighborhood in St. Sulpice. Disturbingly, Matthias's number plate of his Audi A6 was flagged at the border crossing between Switzerland and France just hours later. Investigators were now on a wild goose chase and embroiled in a race against time to save Alessia and Livia. 
Irina was distraught after finding out that her ex-husband had crossed the border into France. The Swiss authorities contacted Europol and requested their assistance from the French authorities. This interconnected web of authorities allowed the Swiss police to notify the French police immediately. No time was wasted in the attempt to locate Alessia and Livia. French and Swiss officers began combing through border towns, hoping to find the two girls. At 3.31 a.m., Matthias's phone was found in Annecy, France, close to the Swiss border. At around 12.30 a.m. on January 31, 2011, Matthias was spotted at multiple cash machines in Marseille, France. He withdrew around 7,000 euros and placed around 4,400 euros in an envelope, along with a postcard addressed to Arena. The postcard read, I can't live without you. I miss you. French authorities were sweeping Marseille, visiting the cash points where Matthias had withdrawn money, but yet again, he was one step ahead. After sending the postcard to Arena, Matthias boarded a ferry bound for Propriano Corsica, a small island between France and Italy belonging to France. Some witnesses reported seeing Alessia and Livia on the ferry with Matthias. However, investigators believe their trail ends in Switzerland. The ferry arrived in Corsica at around 6.30 a.m. that morning. Matthias didn't stay on the island long, and by 9 p.m. that evening, he boarded another ferry from Propriano to Toulon, around 206 miles away. Toulon is situated on the French mainland, and it is believed that Matthias boarded this ferry alone. There are conflicting reports and timelines of Matthias's movements. Some sources state that he went straight from Corsica to Italy while the others say he went to Toulon. On February 2, 2011, Matthias was once again spotted at a toll, alone. It is safe to say that Matthias was one step ahead of authorities, and on February 3rd, the case would come to a crescendo. Europol and Swiss authorities received intel that Matthias had been spotted in Serignola, Italy, before authorities could swoop in and arrest him, the unthinkable happened. At 10.47 p.m., residents of Serignola were horrified as they witnessed a man stepping in front of an oncoming train with the impact killing him instantly. There was no sign of Alessia and Livia, and the only person who could have led authorities to them was now dead. Matthias left a note and most of the contents have never been released. An Italian newspaper was able to publish a single sentence from the letter that read, The children rest in peace. They have not suffered. There was no mention of where the girl's remains were or what he had done with them. A witness spotted a man matching Matthias's description, taking a girl to the restroom in Italy. Authorities reviewed the CCTV tapes from the restaurant, but cannot confirm whether this was Matthias and the girls. In addition to the 4,400 euros that Matthias sent to Arena, investigators also found 1,500 euros in a defunct post box. When a forensic examination of Matthias's computer and electronics was performed, investigators came across some troubling searches. In the days before the girls disappeared, Matthias had searched for fairy timetables, firearms, poisons, and different ways to complete suicide. Some have theorized that Alessia and Livia died after leaving Switzerland and that Matthias threw their bodies overboard while on the ferry. Another theory is that the girls were alive until they got on the ferry to Corsica and that he disposed of them there. 
A search of Lake Geneva was performed after witnesses' reports of a man throwing suitcases into the water were made, but nothing was ever found. In 2014, an Italian journalist who worked on an Italian TV show that focused on missing persons reported that they had received a letter from someone claiming to have provided Matthias with false documents. These documents were created for Alessia and Livia, so the two girls would be granted entry into Canada. The anonymous source then claims that the twins had been separated, with one of them living in Ottawa and the other in Quebec. There have been numerous sightings of the twins over the years. In 2012, the Swiss authorities received a picture that was believed to be Livia Schapp. The photograph was taken in a hotel close to Barcelona. There is also another theory circulating online that Julia Faustina, a young Polish woman, may be Livia. Proponents of this theory point to a striking resemblance between Faustina and Livia, as well as similarities in their ages and birth dates. Additionally, Faustina reportedly lacks documentation of her own birth and has claimed to have been adopted as a child, which could potentially support the idea that she is Livia. Faustina is also the same girl that has claimed to be Madeline McCann. There is no concrete evidence to support either theory, and both remain purely speculative. In 2018, a forest worker in Morges, Switzerland, made a troubling discovery. Carved into one of the trees were the letters M, L, and A. According to the authorities, this area had been extensively searched before, and there was no mention of this in 2011. Arena, Alessia and Livia's mother, celebrate their birthdays every year. If still alive today, they would be almost 19 years old. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Lausanne West Police at 021-622-8000. 15-year-old Ashley Renee Martinez was born on January 24, 1989 and grew up in St. Joseph, Missouri with her mother and three brothers. It is unclear if her father was in the picture, but the Martinez family were said to be close-knit. Ashley had struggled with her mental health and some reports indicate she had bipolar disorder. She was taking medication to help her condition and was soon back on track. When not studying at Robodeau Middle School, Ashley often hung out with her friends. Ashley had big dreams and wanted to become a model. Her friends and family encouraged her to follow her dreams, but also reminded her that she needed to focus on her education too. Months before she disappeared, Ashley got a kitten named Coco, and her friends say she doted on him. She was a sweet and easygoing young woman who had plenty of friends. Unfortunately, not all of these friends were good influences or age appropriate for a 15 year old girl. July 26, 2004 was another sunny day for the residents of St. Joseph, Missouri. School was out for the summer and all the youngsters looked forward to spending time off with their friends. That day, Ashley and her younger brother were dropped off at the Krug Park pool around 12 p.m. Ashley quickly noticed a group of her friends and went over to say hello. Ashley, her younger brother, and her friends made a plan of action for the day and dove straight into the ice-cold pool. The youngsters splashed around for a bit. Sometime that afternoon, Ashley asked a friend if she could borrow her phone to make a quick call. This call was to 32-year-old Christopher Hart, who allegedly lived close to Ashley. In July 2004, Hart was in home confinement as per court orders. Hart was on parole for a second-degree assault 
drug possession, unlawful use of a weapon, and resisting arrest at the time of Ashley's disappearance. How Ashley became friends with the 32-year-old convicted criminal remains unknown. There are rumors that Ashley had been smoking marijuana, and we know that Hart had a drug possession charge. Some have speculated that Hart was dealing to Ashley since they lived close by, and that is how they met. We know that Ashley called Hart, who arrived at the pool sometime that afternoon. Ashley's little brother later confirmed that he saw Ashley getting into a gray 1995 Pontiac Bonneville. The gray Pontiac that the two had allegedly been traveling in was stolen, adding yet another charge to Hart's rap sheet. Ashley's friend, Tabitha Kretzer, who was at the pool the day she disappeared, told the Kansas City Star, I thought she had gone to the convenience store, but she never came back. I still think about her all the time. When Ashley's mother arrived at the pool that evening to collect them, she was horrified to see only her younger brother had gotten into the car. She immediately asked where Ashley was, and he replied that she had called up a friend and that they had gone. Ashley's mother contacted the St. Joseph Police Department, and a missing person investigation was launched. Shortly after Ashley disappeared, investigators discovered that Ashley and Hart had been planning to run away to California and then to Oregon. Multiple searches of Krug Park Pool were conducted, but no sign of Ashley was found. As the days went on, the searches for Ashley continued, and her case gained local media attention. Tips and leads came in, none of them led anywhere. Ashley had run away for a day or so, but had always returned home. Her mother knew of her daughter's history, but felt that something was different this time, which prompted her to file a police report. Ashley's mother knew she hadn't run away of her own volition, as all her belongings had been left behind, including her asthma inhaler and bipolar medication. She also stated... Ashley would never leave behind her beloved cat Coco. Eleven days after Ashley disappeared, Hart was arrested in Olympia, Washington. He also had a warrant out for his arrest in Missouri after failing to attend his probation hearing and mandated drug counseling. Unfortunately, in Washington, Hart was smart enough to provide the authorities with a fake name. Raymond Price. Because of this, the police in Washington had no idea he had a warrant out for his arrest or that he was a suspect in a missing person case. Hart was arrested in Washington on September 7, 2004, this time for his parole violation. It appears that the police in Washington finally discovered the truth about Mr. Raymond Price and he was held pending extradition to Missouri. While held in Washington, Hart apparently exhibited bizarre behavior and was subjected to a mental health assessment, the outcome of which has never been released to the public. Hart refused to give the police any information about Ashley while imprisoned, and the interviews with him ran around in circles. Since Ashley's disappearance, Hart has been in and out of prison primarily for violating parole. His latest release was in 2019, but he is now awaiting trial for domestic violence charges and unlawful use of a weapon. Again, Hart has never spoken about Ashley and continues to be uncooperative. In September 2004, the former principal of Robodeau Middle School told the St. Joseph Police that she saw Ashley on the corner of Leonard and Frederick Avenue in St. Joseph in the company of a tall African-American man. As this witness had been the principal at Ashley's school, she told the police that the two instantly recognized each other and even waved to one another. The former principal claimed to have seen Ashley and the unidentified man walking down Frederick Street 
and across the highway bridge later that afternoon. Years would pass without significant leads, but in 2017, Julie Walgren came forward with a troubling story. She told the news press now, I remember going over to Hart's house. He told me he met a girl, and she was there. He told me he'd met her at Krug Pool. The next day, a couple of days later maybe, I went back over there, and she was there, and they were talking about going to Oregon. And I changed my mind about going with them. I had a bad feeling. Something in my gut told me I shouldn't go, and I just didn't want that. After telling Hart she no longer wanted to go on the trip to Oregon, Julie said Hart left her house and headed to Krug Pool to pick up Ashley. Since 2017, Ashley's case has had very few leads and it remains cold. Ashley's mother told the media, As a mother, you can never give up hope. You just can't. I know she needs me, and if there is any possible way or hope of getting her home, I am going to have to be the drive behind it. Ashley Renee Martinez is described as a white female with sandy blonde hair, blue eyes, 5'3 to 5'5, and 110 pounds. Her ears, tongue, and navel are pierced, and she has a scar on her left wrist. Ashley has bipolar disorder and requires medication and also requires an asthma inhaler. She was last seen wearing blue jean shorts, a black bikini with red cherries, white Reebok trainers, and a ring with two hearts joined together. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Jason Strong of the St. Joseph Police Department at 816-271-8. 4777. Quote the case number S008229994. Until next time, take care.